Hey guy, NerdKing101 here, and welcome to my review of Spider-Man Far From Home. Just for anybody wondering, I'm away right now, and the place I'm at had really bad internet, so I'm unable to put together a well-edited video for this review. Also, there isn't much to work with, because all I have is footage from the trailers. So, I'm just gonna stand here and do this in one take, so we can have this video up tonight. Alright, let's talk about Far From Home. This is better than Spider-Man Homecoming, in my opinion. At first, I wasn't sure if I wanted to really say that or not. If I really wanted to say it was better than Homecoming. But the more I've thought about it, the more I agree with that statement. Um, quick thought, just overall, before we get into it. The movie's really good. It's fun. It's entertaining. It's dramatic. It's sad. It's funny. It's a really good movie. And while I do feel there was definitely, it was almost like they didn't know how they wanted to handle it. Like, they focused not a lot on the Spider-Man and Iron Man issue with Iron Man death, the follow out from that, the aftermath of that. But they also focused heavily on the MJ and Peter romance, which, by the way, is my second favorite part of this movie. I think I'm my third. Because, okay, I am, like, I support the relationship between Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. I hate one more day. I'm that guy. But, I'm also, like, it's been done a million times. And in the comic books, the where it, like, is an integral part of the character, I support it because it's part of the character. You can't have Peter Parker in this one set without having him be in a relationship with Mary. It just doesn't work. Like, putting him, like, Carrie Kelly and all these characters, it doesn't work. So, what is, not Carrie Kelly. Carrie Kelly's the girl from All-Star Batman and Robin. Not All-Star Batman and Robin, from the Dark Knight Millerverse. Putting her with Carly Cooper. Her name is Carly Cooper. Putting him with her, it does not work. So, what's the problem? Alright, the problem with that is that it's the comic book where it's all that universe, where there's all that history. Here in the MCU, we don't have that bad. We don't have the baggage of the, pre the previous Mary Jane and Peter Parker stuff. So they have created a new character called MJ, but her real name is actually Michelle, Michelle Jones, and she is great. She's a lot of fun. She plays very well off of the character they created for Tom Holland. She's very nerdy and geeky in a very different way. She's clearly very bad at interacting with other people. She's awkward. He's awkward. Both Vendana and Tom Holland do a great job of fulfilling, of playing that awkward teen and romantic situation. They're really good. I also really enjoyed the moment that really got me interested. It really hooked me one. The whole movie, I'm like, okay, this is cute. Like, it was cute. And then she had the line where she's like, I was only interested because I saw something from Spider Man. And then you had, you had, you had, they I remember hooked me. You know, like, that is a great twist. And then they did a double twist. Where it wasn't that she was only interested because she thought it was Spider Man, but she was using that to cover up her own insecurity. Which I really liked. That is like a double twist that I liked. Um, the other thing that I liked a ton is the stew. I adore the stew. I adore it. I think it's a really good stew. It looks really good. I really like the new suit that he makes in the, in the uh, plane. I love it. Um, but the thing I love about it the most is that you have Peter Parker, right? You have Peter Parker on the plane, went happy, and he's like, you do the suit, I'll do the music. And he turns on Black in Black, Back in Black, the same track that played at the very beginning of the first Iron Man movie. And it plays while Peter builds his own Iron Man suit using Stark technology, which I love. One thing I don't like is the idea that there has to be a new Iron Man. I feel like they played it almost too much literally. That's thing where they have his hands in the hologram and he's building the suit. I'm like, I don't think what people, like, it shouldn't be who's going to be the next Iron Man. It should be who's going to fill that role as the number one hero. I feel like a lot of people meant it literally who's going to wear a, a tech suit and be the new Iron Man. And I did not like that. I thought that was too literal of the situation they were going for, and that really bothered me. But basically, what I did like was that was the suit that he made, what people call the Steve Ditko suit. I love it. I wasn't like, I wasn't going to go people was immediately on board with it. But then when I saw that suit, or when I saw him using it, it was really good. A lot of the stuff from the end of the movie, there seemed very much like it was right out of that PS4 video game. Which I think I had the review of going out sometime in the future. But, no, it seemed like it was right out of the game. It was really cool. 
So with the result of the sequence, like some of the shots from me on the stereo sequence, the illusion sequence, I felt like were straight out of the game. Definitely the one where he touches his reflection. That was really cool, but the thing I liked most about this was the Mysterio twist. Because the Mysterio twist was clever in a way I honestly cannot describe. I really enjoyed this Mysterio twist. I thought it was really good. I really like the idea that Mysterio was somebody who worked for Tony Stark and helped him create the barf technology from Civil War and then Tony Stark fired him for arguing with him. And now he's the guy who finds out that these augmented reality godlike glasses that Tony invented are going to some 15 year old and he gets really mad. I really like that. I like all of it. I like how he's a sociopath. But his plan is horrible. His plan is to become a hero through illusion. But as many people have pointed out already, what happens when Manette Thanos, Ultron, Loki? What happens in the forever future? When Galactus shows up, and Galactus is like, hey, I'm gonna eat the Earth now. What's he gonna do? Fight him? He's not actually that powerful. It's all fake. So I really enjoyed getting to see Mysterio do that. I really thought, like, that approach to the character was unique and different and would not work in the comics. It's not the comic book origin, but I'm not very attached to Mysterio character. And it's also still Mysterio. The origin is different, but the end result is still very Mysterio. Like, some of that final fight, the only thing I was thinking of was, too bad is it not later down the line, so you couldn't have Mysterio do the thing where he creates, like, a rhino robot, a vulture robot, a Thanos robot. There was even a point where it would have been really, would have been really cool, would have been if you could have gotten, like, all the Black Order, and Thanos, and Vulture, and all the cast team from Civil War, and you could have had, like, robots, and you could have had all the actors come back, and you could have had to be, like, robots. And Fireman has to like fight them all off and he'd be or you could even CGI them all in. You could create like CGI versions of the actors. And make them like robots. That would have been really cool. I know some people have complained that when the gravestone of Tony Stark is shown, it would have been a good time to show Uncle Ben grave. I'm not really going to get into the Uncle Ben thing. I'm I wanna see where they go with it. I have a feel there's no way you're not going to mention Uncle Ben at all. I'm excited to see where they go with that. But, I really liked that, but the thing I liked about the most about the material thing was that it was different, but it stayed true to the character. The reason I had a problem with things like the Iron Man 3 Mandarin twist is that that took away my potential of seeing my Iron Man versus Mandarin fight. Of seeing the Iron Man fight Mandarin. And now they're like, well, the Mandarin may still exist. I'm like, yeah, but I don't care. I mean, I can't see Robert Downey Jr. Iron Man fight the Mandarin, so I'm still mad at you. I'm so mad about it, Marvel. You can't fix it. This isn't like a comic book where you can just retcon it later on. Because, yeah, you can retcon it later on and bring in the Mandarin, but Robert Downey Jr. or Tony Stark isn't, isn't around anymore. So unless you bring Robert Downey Jr. or Tony Stark back and have him replaced into the universe and have him reestablish himself and then fight the Mandarin, I'm not going to be happy. But with Mysterio, it felt so natural. It was really cool. I really liked it. It was still Mysterio. I like that the Peter Parker MJ romance. I loved it. Mostly because it was such a unique take on it. It was so different. I particularly enjoyed at the end when they... I love it when they at the end. It didn't have been like this dramatic, cheesy, cliche kiss scene at the end of the movie. It was like, they're both still awkward teenagers. And it was, once again, it was different. It wasn't like they had a big kiss moment. It was like, they're both kind of awkwardly stumbling over each other, and both Vendana and Tom Holland did a great job in that scene. I felt like that's something like a prize. Um, now, on to the post credit scene. I do want to quickly talk about those. The post credit scenes in this movie are great. I adore them. Uh, the first one, I will admit, I was a little bit like, that's it. I, mean, I drank two bottles of water during this movie, and I really had to use the bathroom. So I was kind of like, come on, come on, come on. I was kind of hoping, like, it better be like Galactic. And then at the end, you see Nick Fury reveal that they were after scrolls. And then you see it's, uh, it's Nick Fury leading Sword. And I'm like, that's awesome. For those people that don't know, Sword is basically shield in space. It used to be led in the comics, I believe. The last notable leader was Captain. was Carol Danvers Miss Marvel, or Carol Danvers Captain Marvel. But that was really cool. Um, 
the first post credit scene though, the one. So you have at the end of the movie we get the Spider-Man web swing. And it's awesome, and after you get like a minute of that, at the end of the movie you see him he like takes a selfie. And when he takes the selfie, I'm like, oh, obviously, it's going to be uh Mary G. It's going to be we're going to swing past the building and it's going to be Daily Bugle. I thought it would be revealed the Daily Bugle. And I was almost right. So but then he actually meets up with Mary Jane and him, not Mary Jane, MJ or Miss G, Michelle Jones. And uh, let's, let's just call her MJ. He meets up with MJ, he pissed her up and he takes her web swinging. And it's a great scene. And then you know, he puts her down and he's like, he's like, you should be going. And there's a great scene where he sends her a text before he gets to get to her. And he texts her, a picture of him doing a selfie in the air. And she texts him, it's really hard to notice, it only lasts like two seconds. But it says, don't swing and text. And it's really funny, I burst out laughing. There were like one or two moments in this movie where I burst out laughing. The f- most of the Happy and Aunt May stuff made me burst out laughing. Um, the scene of the getting when they're on the plane and Peter's trying to get next to MJ and he ends up sitting next to his annoying teacher because they screw it up was hilarious. I adored it. I adored that thing. That was great. So basically, what happened, though, what then it got me was that at the end, you see a video on breaking news and you're like, if Mysterio really they pinned the entire plot of the movie on Spider-Man. Because as I didn't really get into because it's elaborate, but because it's actually, it's not a very complex plan. The plan doesn't have really anything to do with the, what I like about the movie. But if material plan is to basically, he knew the special effect. Think basically what you would expect. He is making himself look like a hero by fighting the special effect. It's the same kind of stuff you always see in material origins. He makes himself look like a good guy. Turns out he's not. Peter and him fight. Mysterio dies. He may still be alive. I did really like that Easy either. The glasses. I forgot what they were called, but I did really like the glasses. I thought that was awesome. But they were really cool. I'm also really into. You're gonna be seeing a video in the future about AR. I'm really into AR. I think it's really cool. But uh, no. So that was awesome. But at the end, after he puts Mary Jane down, he jumps up and he's like, you know, he's gonna go swing away. And then you're seeing Mysterio pinning the blame, and then you cut to J.K. Simmons. My boy, J.K. Simmons. I would, I remember when I saw him, I was like, he was bald. He looked different than he did in the, in the Raimi movie. But I heard the voice, and I, and I was like, I think that's J.K. Simmons. So I remember, I was like, is that J.K. Simmons? I remember I said out loud in the movie, I was like, is that J.K. Simmons? Because the movie was over. I turned around the guy behind me, I was like, is that J.K. Simmons? And he was like, I think it is. We were both like, is that J.K. Simmons? And J. J. Jordan Jameson? I was so blown away. And then it turned out it is, and he's talking about how Spider Man is a menace, and this is how we're painting Spider Man as a menace. It's really clever. And then at the very end, I'm like, okay, Spider Man's a menace. Got it. But he said that's not the most shocking part. And I knew we were going to cut to something else. I was like, he's going to talk about how. I assume my immediate reaction when he cut the that's not the most groundbreaking news was he was going to say a group of four astronauts. He was going to talk about a group of four astronauts getting like lost in space or something. It was going to be a fantastic four weapon or we're going to be like or we're going to be something like a young girl named Catherine Pride who found unconscious at, in the living room below her bedroom. Her parents think she's some kind of mutant. I thought they had to do like an X Men reference or something. But I'm leaning more towards Fantastic Four. I think it will be some sort of a missing report. It will mention Susan Storm and Reed Richards in some way. Maybe it would even be something like Brilliant Scientist Reed Richards and graduate from whatever college would like to go. I almost knocked over a thing here. We actually have been seen on date with a mysterious blonde haired woman named Susan. Or something. But no. We cut in Mysterio and he goes, But, you got to know that Spider Man girl named Peter Parker. And you see, MJ, you got the dark thing with the Donald's a great job. He's just like, He's just like, And I'm over like, Is he gonna get mad at him? But then she's like, You know, she doesn't believe a word. She's just a job. He's just like, And he goes, Keep me a marker. And he's just like, and, and, and Tom Holland is a great thing. He puts his hand on his head like this. 
and then his eyes are like super animated and they go wide. And you're just like, oh no! And then the movie ends and you're like, and then we get the next post credit scene with Nick Fury and Thor and all that, but. That was great. I also like how throughout the movie you're like, why is he not calling me Avenger? What is going on? And Nick Fury wouldn't say something like, don't invoke her name. About Captain Marvel. That felt, that felt very out of character. So it turned out it was actually Talos for Captain Marvel. It was a scroll. And the scroll turned into working with Nick Fury. They're good scrolls. And part of Sword, I guess. But. I mean, really good movie. As a Spider Man movie, it's. Honestly. I don't want to have the Raimi debate in the comments. But you know what? This is my favorite live action Spider Man movie. Obviously, the best Spider-Man movie is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That movie, like, just on an objective, artistic level, that movie is a masterpiece. It's great. But, out of, like, Sam Raimi movies, Homecoming, Andrew, Bo Andrew Garfield, amazing, amazing Spider-Man, or should we say not so amazing, right? Or should we say the not so amazing Spider-Man, huh? Huh? Anybody? Not funny? Okay. But in all seriousness, guys, Far From Home is my favorite Spider-Man movie. I, I, I love this movie. It's so unbelievably good. It's a lot of fun. I think what it does really well, even though I feel like there was some, con some like, multiple people having different directions for it, with, like, I think some people wanted to lean more towards dealing with Tony Stark's death, and some people wanted to go the more teen comedy route, I felt like at the end of the day, it blended together really well. Because the fight, Iron Man stuff was great with some of the Iron Man death. But at the same time, the, the MJ and Peter stuff was great. And yeah, I really liked the movie. I'm sorry if I missed something. I don't really have a lot because my internet is really bad out here. So I haven't had much time to like read summaries of the film and recap myself like I like to do before reviews. But um, yeah, really good movie. Not many things else I have to say about it. The only real problem with it, and this is probably why my review is so scattershotted, is because it's very much what you would believe. Like, if you've seen Endgame, you've watched the trailer, and you know who Mysterio is, and you understand that uh, Ms. MJ is Michelle Jones and not Mary Jane Watson, then you immediately are like, oh, okay. Or built, okay, so this is going to be a romance movie about Peter Parker and MJ. And Miss, or Peter Parker and Miss Del, Michelle Jones. It's going to be a romance about them. And it's going to be about Peter, about Peter dealing with Iron Man death, a post-snap world. It's going to be a teen comedy. And Mysterio's in it. And he's being shown off as a hero in the trailer. So clearly, Mysterio is just a villain pretending to be a hero. Using technology, he's lying about being from the multiverse. Now, one thing I do want to quickly mention, and that, that was not a lie, but basically what I'm saying is that if you know Mysterio, you can basically figure out the entire plot of this movie. If you understand the context of the time the film takes place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and you know what Mysterio is all about, this movie is really easy to predict and very predictable, besides for the twist of Mysterio's origin. Like, the, the, the core twist that Mysterio is a villain is predictable, but everything else is fun and hard to predict. But I like the core, core, the bare bones main story beats. They're like, the whole movie, like, once they beat the last elemental, and you're like, okay, so when are they going to reveal the Mysterio of the villain? Like, when's that going to happen? I looked at my watch, I'm like, there's still an hour left in this. There's, there's still like an hour and a half left, so they clearly have to do that. But, I did the thing about the multiverse thing. Clearly, when I heard Six One Death, I thought that isn't right. That is impossible. That doesn't, according to the Marvel rules of the Marvel multiverse, that is impossible. We have Earth Six One Death is the comic book. It's like the original comic book, or where all the, the our main stories, all the story and the comic book plot take place. That where the Clone Saga happens. That for one more day, Civil War. That's where Peter and Parker and Mary Jane Watson got married. That's where Franklin, Franklin and Verlalia Richard come from. Where, where they were birthed, where they were given, where they were, you know, the children of Reed and Sue. 
that that's all that, but then chapter 4, the X-Men, their origins, their first appearances, that's all set one set. And Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has a numerical designation. Now this could change because it's a really confusing numerical designation, but it was given one years ago when the MCU started. It's something really stupid like Earth 99999, like Earth 109. And they are very special Earths. And that's the thing you all talk about, there's something special about the MCU. Because the end, because Earth 99999 was excluded from Secret Wars. They were not bothered by any of the events in, in 2015 Secret Wars. So something's up there. But, or maybe, I'm hoping they explain that in the comments. I'm hoping they, like, maybe they go to this one, to, to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and they, like, figure it out. Maybe what would be really cool would be if when we do Fantastic Four, if Reed goes and meets the Council of Reeds, and they're all, like, drawn. Like, all the other Reeds are, like, drawn comic book characters. Like, and you have, like, a comic book, like, an animated comic book version of Reed Richard will reach out his hand. And, like, I'm Reed Richard, I'm the original Reed Richard, or stick one stick. And then you can be like, and this is why this is a special universe. I think that would be really cool if we did something like that. But, yeah. The whole multiverse thing was all weird. That's the thing. The multiverse thing is weird because I'm like, Quentin Beck and Mysterio were full of crap. He, like, as, as Nick Fury says in the end of the movie, or scroll Nick Fury, that is the bullshit. Like, he, he, he's lying. Like, the, the actual quote from the movie, and Mysterio was obviously lying, but we as fans obviously know there is a multiverse. Like, from day one, even when there was not an introduction to the multiverse, there was a multiverse. And all, theoretically, all official Marvel properties are part of the Marvel multiverse. That's the way it works. That's why we have a multiverse. So any Marvel property can be part of any story. So eventually it was always a part of the multiverse, but it had not been introduced into the storytelling yet. And it was excluded from all comic book events. Because we don't want to mess with the movies. Because they'll make billions upon billions of dollars. Hundreds of hundreds of billions. Probably trillions at this point. The point, the point, is that the multiverse exists in the movies. It does, it's been referenced in Doctor Strange, it's been hinted towards in other movies. It doesn't exist, but it is very interesting to see that Quentin Beck alive. I mean, when I thought of a thing, when I thought of a thing, a lot of people were saying, well, he said Dick wants this, so clearly you're retconning it. And they'll probably just change the number for the comic book. I'm like, no, that's stupid. But Earth, this Earth has a numerical designation already. It does. It's been given, it was given one like 10 years ago by Marvel Comics. So then I immediately thought, so obviously, maybe this obviously isn't Earth 616. We know that. That's factually inaccurate. And I said, okay, well, so since it's not 616, Quentin Beck is obviously lying. He's also Mysterio. But no, really good movie. Really enjoyed it. I'm going to make a couple minor edits to this video. A couple things happened during this. I choked on some, some live during the video. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to make a couple edits to this video. I bumped into it. Yeah. I'm going to have to make one or two edits to this video just to fix a couple things that got interrupted a couple of times. No major editing though. Just a couple jump cuts. So this was actually all filmed in one take. I had to cut out a couple of things where I got distracted or was taken away from the camera for a period of time. That happened like once or twice, so I had to make some edit. But guys, I would give Spider-Man Far From Home a historic 9 out of 10. A couple really minor issues, really good movie, highly recommend it. Though I don't know why you would have watched this video if you hadn't seen it yet. If you haven't and you have spoiled the whole movie for yourself, Go see it, it's still a lot of fun. I didn't talk about, there were a few things I left out regarding really funny moments because I don't want to go over all the jokes because it's a really funny movie. I told you about my favorite jokes though. Well look guys, have a great day. It's NerdKing101 signing out. You can check me out on Twitter in the description, bo in the description box down below. Also, my video on the Evangelion dub that released on Netflix a couple weeks ago. 
My video on that will be dropping tomorrow at 5.45 Eastern Standard Time. In that video, I will be in the comments. So there will be a premiere, meaning I will be in the comments and in the chat replying to people and talking it up. So definitely go check that out. I'm going to work on some more stuff. I have a couple days off for um, July 4th because I, work in, I live in America. Both of us guys, have a great day. Like Nerd King 101, signing out, subscribe for more videos.